Hey y'all, good afternoon. John with New York and Metro Weather. We are here to discuss more about the upcoming storm system for Sunday into Monday. It's an active pattern. We have a lot to talk about and while it's quiet now, it's going to get much more active and then a lot colder beyond that. But let's focus on the storm for Sunday into Monday. A lot going on, a lot uh, kind of flying around today. We're seeing a lot of snow maps and snow numbers coming out. A little early for that for us. Um, but we're going to break down exactly what's going on and kind of get into it. So we're looking at the mid-levels of the atmosphere. This is like the uh, spin in the atmosphere, vorticity, and it kind of gives us a good idea as to where the storms are and the pieces that are helping to form those storms. Um, and what we want to turn your attention to, New York City's way over here, but we turn your attention to this disturbance coming out of the northern plains and then this other one here in the four corners. The two of them are going to merge uh, and link up as they move uh, over the central United States and you'll see the two of them form a mid and upper level low. So initially when you look at this uh, just from a weather perspective, meteorology, um, you're telling yourself, okay, so we have cold air here, we have a, a kind of an active flow over New England and we have this disturbance now over the southern U.S. This could be a winter weather producer uh, for New York City, including the coast. But watch what happens as the storm moves off to the east and southeast. Two things. First of all, all that disturbance here over New England is gone now. Uh, that's kind of vacated the picture completely. And second, we have this, sec this third distur disturbance coming down over the northern plains into the Great Lakes. And so all of a sudden, not only is everything gone that was holding that cold air in place across New England, but we have this this third disturbance coming down that's kind of acting to change the tilt and allowing this uh, mid and upper low over the southeast to slingshot up the coast. And you can see that happen right here. So it slingshots up right towards the New York City metro area which is too far west if you're looking for a big snowstorm in New York City. We don't have anything to keep that cold air in place and to force this to be south of the area so that the low pressure travels south of the area. So um, a lot going on here, uh, and we want to kind of go through it and break it down for you. Uh, we talked the other day about the tracks and the potential tracks of this storm, um, and specifically the three different scenarios. And we, we mentioned this big high pressure that's in place to start. Saturday into Sunday. But notice now models have started to shift this high pressure off the coast and that allows the flow to begin to return behind that high pressure off from the southeast. And when that happens you start to get warmer air involved. And you'll notice that models are now tracking this system inland over the east coast. It's not even, I mean, technically a coastal storm anymore because it's trended so far west that it's tracking inland. And this is an ensemble mean, so we're taking 51 different weather models from the European model uh, and taking the average. And But even if we go and we look at all the different solutions here, all of them essentially are inland now by the time we get to Sunday evening and early Monday morning. However, that doesn't mean this is a flat out rainstorm for the entire area. And one of the main reasons is because ahead of this storm system, we have some very cold and very dry air. Let's look at the dew point simulations for just a couple hours before the storm gets in the area. Let's zoom in on the New York City metro. Dew points are extremely low, uh, behind, uh, right behind the, the first storm from Friday to Saturday that goes way off the shore, and then our incoming storm from Saturday into Sunday. Dew points are very, very low. But you'll notice they're very low specifically across the interior, north and west of the New York City metro. That's important because this is a very cold, very deep air mass that's going to be tough to scour out as that storm comes up the coast. So we know that we have the cold in place um, and we know that we have this storm coming up the coast, but we also know that there's not really that much to keep the cold there. So it's gonna be a battle really um, between how long that cold can stay in place and how quickly the storm comes up the coast and brings that warm air with it. Here's the European model simulation. This is Sunday. Uh, early, late afternoon and early evening. Here we are very late evening on Sunday and you'll see snow is breaking out across the entire mid-Atlantic states uh, including the Washington DC area moving northward into Pennsylvania by the early morning hours of Monday and then it's closing in on the New York City area uh, by Monday. This is valid at uh, 4 o'clock a.m. If we zoom into the New York City metro and we look at the simulation in the New York City metro, wouldn't you believe it? The area where the dew points were the lowest and the temperatures were the lowest and the cold was deepest that we just looked at is snow. And 
possibly moderate to heavy snow, and that's northwest New Jersey, possibly northeast New Jersey, and the burbs of southeast New York and Connecticut on Monday morning. Um, that rain snow line is right near the New York City metro. I mean, it is right there. That's on Monday morning. And then by the time we get a little later into Monday, it starts to creep up northward, and that snow finds its way north into New England with New York City changing to rain on the backside of the storm by figure noontime on Monday. However, if we were to look at this European model simulation and look at the snowfall totals, it's not in an insignificant amount of snow in northern New Jersey, and it's not terribly insignificant just outside of New York City as well. In Bergen County, we're looking at, you know, substantial snowfall, and up here in Sussex and Morris County, even more substantial. This is just one model simulation, but I think what we're trying to illustrate here is that it's really going to be a very fine line between who sees snow and who doesn't. Let's get a little more technical and dive into this GFS model, right? So just to get into what we were talking about, here's the simulation for the GFS for Monday, early morning hours, pre-sunrise. You can see it's snowing in northern New Jersey and New York City. But you'll notice, again, when we, when we zoom in and we look at the model fields, and we look at the temperature, and we talked about that that front and how, how close it is. You can see right there, the freezing line is right near, running almost directly through the New York City metro area. And if you look at the winds at the surface, you can see, again, those winds are ripping into the east and southeast, but just, in, just inland, in northern New Jersey, they're out of the northeast and kind of funneling that cold air in. So this is going to be a really, really close call when it comes to uh, what the impacts are going to be in the New York City metro area. And really the feeling right now is that just outside of the city, there could be several inches of snow before this changes over terrain. It's going to be difficult to pin down exactly where this rain snow line is going to be. If you look at the latest European model, for example, 4 o'clock a.m. on Monday, snowing in Morristown, snowing in Sussex, snowing in Bergen County, New Jersey, raining in New York, in Brooklyn, in Staten Island, all of Long Island, Philadelphia, and Trenton. So again, the main thing that we want to communicate is there still is a lot of uncertainty, and the New York City area is right on the fringes of this storm. Um, as we move into the next few days and it's going to be really close that's why we feel like throwing out snow amounts right now is really not a great idea and we're not putting a forecast out until tomorrow afternoon at the earliest let's back up though and just make one more illustration i'll jump over to the european ensembles and i want to show you something even though you know the models now agree that this storm is going to come inland at some point Look at the spread in potential solutions by the time we get to Monday morning here on the European model. We have a cluster of them that are way inland over Pennsylvania and another one that's actually off the shore south of the New York City area. And those kind of solutions could begin to introduce uh, a scenario where that snow line that we talked about was just near New York dips a little bit south and east. And it's only going to take 25, 50, 75 mile difference um, to all of a sudden be talking about more snow accumulation in the New York City metro. So it's going to be a close call here. Right now, the highlights are chances of a winter storm are increasing in the interior. That includes PA, New York, uh, and obviously New England, but that also includes northern New Jersey, northwestern New Jersey, uh, southeast New York, and parts of interior Connecticut. It does not look like a winter storm along the coast. So places like Atlantic City, Asbury Park, Long Island, Long Beach Island, Philly, and Trenton, not looking like a very high impact winter weather event there. The New York City Metro though is right on that line where a shift in either direction over the next 24, 36 hours on these weather models is gonna impact what we're expecting from Sunday into Monday. Right now, if we had to make a lean, I think we're leaning towards the warmer solution where that snow stays in the interior. But again, we're right on that periphery where a slight shift could make a huge difference uh, for New York. So stick with us for the next couple days. We'll break it all down for you and we'll share this information with you. Um, and when we get comfortable enough, We'll start putting out some numbers and snowfall ranges uh, for the New York City metro and surrounding areas as well. That's all we got for today. Uh, we'll have the latest data on our Twitter feed tonight. We hope you guys have a great Thursday afternoon. Take care.